So having checked out Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker on Thursday at midnight, I've had some time to process my thoughts and to think about where I stand on this film. And like a lot of people, it's a very mixed bag. I call this video a cinematic reckoning for good ways and for bad ways. I think that for the final film in the Star Wars saga, this is very misjoint. It's a misjointed film. It doesn't feel like it's perfected and it doesn't feel like it's, you know, no film is perfect at the end of the day. But for a finale to the Star Wars Skywalker saga, there are some things that I wish they would have done leading up to this film and also in this film itself that would, you know, justify the paths they took in this film. So I think that, you know, there's a mixed bag and I'm going to get into the positives, the negatives and what I overall think of this film. But before I get into it, I just want to say this is going to be a spoiler review. So there are going to be moments from the film that I talk about that obviously if you haven't seen the film, it will be spoiled for you. So if you haven't seen Star Wars The Rise of Sky, Walker, I would, you know, turn the video off, go and watch it, and then come back and watch the video if you want to hear my opinions on the film. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into my review. So I left The Rise of Skywalker feeling very unsatisfied, and I don't mean unsatisfied in a way that is, you know, I hated everything about this film. I think there was some really you know, good positives in it, but there was a lot of negatives that threw me off this trilogy you know, as a whole, and I left the cinema feeling very much like what was the point of this entire trilogy because they've derailed on everything, you know, we went through with Anakin and Darth Vader. You know, they kind of lessened the importance of Anakin throwing Palpatine into the Death Star reactor in the first place, you know, mainly for bringing him back. But before I get into the negatives, I'm going to discuss some of the positives I had with this film. To start off with, there was some character decisions they made for some of the characters and the way these characters ended up in the Star Wars saga that I actually liked. I thought, you know, the way they int integrated Leia into the kind of Kylo Ren transformation, her passing um, during, you know, the lightsaber battle on the Re Death Star wreckage, I thought that was fine. I, I actually liked the way they handled that. It actually made the lightsaber battle more rememberable than it was because the, that, that lightsaber battle was just action there was nothing memorable about it it was just Rey and Kylo jumping around the wreckage fighting and seeing things that we've seen before visually spectacular but in terms of it being rememberable as a lightsaber battle feeling kind of operatic you know in the previous films the lightsaber battles were very Shakespearean especially episode threes and I mean I don't absolutely love the prequels but episode three had some memorable lightsaber battles and this film didn't really have any memorable lightsaber battles, but what made the Rey and Kylo Ren battle feel at least half decent was the way they approached Leia and Kylo, you know, and his transformation back into Ben Solo. And it was due to the fact that they had the passing of Leia, the death of Leia during that sequence, and they both kind of felt it. Rey and Kylo both felt that passing, and it was the main kind of uh, reason why Kylo ch changed back into Ben Solo. And I think the way they kind of had Rey, you know, kill him with his lightsaber, and then obviously she brought him back using the healing powers which they revealed in the film, which I wasn't too angry with. A lot of people were angry with that whole healing thing. Obviously, they introduced it in The Mandalorian, the newest episode as well. They kind of linked, tied that into it. So I wasn't, uh, I wasn't overly satisfied with the, you know, the healing stuff and the new powers, but I, I didn't mind it. And I also didn't mind the way, I thought it was a positive, the way they ended Leia and they ended Kylo's story in this film. I also really liked C-3PO. I liked the whole, um, you know, showing how he can read Sith and stuff and Sith coding and how that was a part of his memory and his interface and how he'd have to have to scrub his entire memory to do so. And as much as, you know, some people are going to be angry with that, I kind of liked the way that was a homage to what the droids are in Star Wars. And that's, you know, they are the memory of everything that happens. They watch and observe, just like us, the viewer, everything that happens and they react to it. It. So I really liked the way they approached C-3PO and mainly because he was just a very enjoyable character in this film, you know, unlike some of the others uh, which they had in or some that they had in in The Last Jedi and decided to completely throw out the window.
window like uh, Rose Tico, which I was actually kind of happy with. Not that, you know, I, I didn't want her to be a part of this film. I just thought her character development in The Last Jedi was really bad and some of the things she stood for in that film, I just didn't agree with. It, it just felt like very forced. It felt like there was no purpose to anything she was saying to Finn, like at the end when he tries to sacrifice himself and stuff. But... Overall, there was a few positives there. I did like the final shot of the film. I thought the ending was great. The problem isn't necessarily with the ending. It's with the development to get to that ending that just feels forced, clunky, and it completely diminishes the idea of Anakin Skywalker's, you know, his transformation in the first six films and what he does at the end of Return of the Jedi when he throws the Emperor into the Death Star reactor and brings peace to the galaxy. That is completely diminished. I mean, they turn Anakin Skywalker into a prop in this film, or Darth Vader. They turn him into a helmet and one line of dialogue in this film. I can't quite remember what he says to Rey in this film during a kind of voiceover, because there's a voiceover moment with all the characters kind of, you know, coming back and speaking to Rey just before, you know, she fights the Emperor. Um, but. I, f I personally don't like the way they've treated Anakin with these three films. He, Him and Luke were the beating soul of the kind of motivation of the story of the first six films. And it was their connection as Skywalkers that was I just found was completely diminished in this trilogy. But some of the things that I didn't like about this film were to start off with the way they have 180'd everything they have done over and over again during this trilogy it just makes the entire trilogy feel like a mess and they make they develop Rey as this character in the force awakens that has connection to the force but she doesn't quite know where she fits in the galaxy and then obviously it ends up with her going to see luke in the last jedi then they kind of tease this big reveal and it turns out that she's a no one and then in this film they do another 180 on that and they make her essentially Palpatine's granddaughter who decides at the end of the film to be a Skywalker. That is the problem I have with the ending. Not the ending itself, but the development to get to that ending. The way they make, you know, they, they make Rey in The Last Jedi this, this person who is a no one, but she wants to be someone. And as much as I hated the reveal of that because they teased there was going to be a big reveal and then it turned out to be well, nothing at all. Essentially, she was a no one. It's not that all this stuff happened. It's the way they did it. It's the way they executed the story points in The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. Now, a lot of critics have come out and said that they think there's too much fan service in this film. They think that it, it essentially, you know, how it reverts from The Last Jedi. And obviously, with the critical reviews for The Last Jedi, they loved uh, the film, but then audiences didn't really like it or they were mixed overall. I have to say I agree with the critics on The Rise of Skywalker more than I do with The Last Jedi. On The Last Jedi, you know, there was things that the more you watch that film, you just, you can't quite comprehend why it was done and why it was done in the way it was done. Whereas in this film, you know, I feel like I kind of agree with them in the sense that there's so much fan service, there's so much kind of reversing on what they did in The Last Jedi that it just feels it feels like a mess it feels like the way they ended up doesn't feel justified you know the way Rey ends up on Tatooine looking at the two sons and saying she's Rey Skywalker I don't mind that ending I don't mind her going from being a no one to wanting to be a Skywalker and you know calling herself a Skywalker I don't mind that I just want it to be justified I want to feel a reason to say, yes, Ray, you are a Skywalker, but I have no reason to think that. Now, sure, they did a better job with her character in this film than they did in The Last Jedi, but the lead up to that just feels like they shoved everything into this movie. This movie could have been broke down into three movies because of the amount of stuff they put in the film. It, you know, in terms of story and in terms of character development, it felt like we were moving, moving, moving through sequence, through another sequence, then through this action scene, then for another sequence, then we got to the ending with the Emperor and the big reveal. It just felt too, like too much. This could have been broken down into another three act, you know, an, another three film trilogy. And it, you know, actually explained and developed properly. But instead, we didn't get that. 
I quite honestly think that this trilogy would have been better under the hands of one director, and that's J.J. Abrams. Like, you can see when you watch this film and having time to process it and think about it, that J.J. Abrams was faced with such colossal issues from the previous film that he couldn't quite possibly fix it in this film. I don't think us as fans, when we watched The Last Jedi, understood how much problems the director had to fix in The Rise of Skywalker. I Honestly, I don't know if it was even possible in this film. It was so... Watching the story play out and the way they, you know, had to kind of fix problems and go do, you know, a complete 180 on them in this film, it just felt like it was quite frankly um, impossible to fix them. And although I like the ending, although I like some character decisions, it just, as I've said multiple times in this video, it just didn't feel justified. It didn't feel like I cared that Ray, at the end of the film, that I cared that Ray had, you know, gone from being Palpatine's granddaughter to Ray Skywalker, as she calls herself at the end. Because quite frankly, I started off with her on Jakku and finding out that she was a no one in The Last Jedi to now this just for shock value and fan service so that they could bring back the Emperor in this film to connect him to the film in some way using Rey. And that's the problem with it. There's just no cohesive, you know, direction. It just feels like, okay, we go this way, but no one likes it because we execute it poorly. Now we're going to go this way you know, in this direction in the story in the final film because they didn't like that, but then we haven't got enough development to make that feel necessary. And that's what I feel about this whole trilogy. I think the production design, the visuals, and all the work that goes in uh, to these films has been, you know, a, a, to a high standard. I just think that the story has been, the way it's developed over the three, three films has been a reaction to their own problems that they have you know essentially created in the story and it makes me finally come out of this film and just feel like what was the point of it after Anakin threw the you know or Darth Vader threw the Emperor into the Death Star because that feels like it doesn't even matter anymore but we as Star Wars fans know it matters it's one of the best trilogies of all time and we love the story and the development and the build in them three films in this it just feels clunky and it feels like they've tried to create something new while paying more fan service in this film because they wanted to make fans happy in a way that you know the people who didn't like The Last Jedi liked this but instead they've just produced a clunky mess and I'm not saying I completely hate this film. As I said at the start, there are positives. There are things that I do like. But overall, I'm left feeling unsatisfied with the ending to the story. I'm not looking at looking at this film as a, you know, an adventure film, as a an individual piece, because it is a part of a nine film saga that is essentially one of the biggest franchises of all time. And when you've got a story there that's so powerful in the previous, you know, six to seven films, to see that kind of go down a slope in the last film and a half has just, or two films, has just been, it's, it just feels unsatisfying to me. But that's my opinion on The Rise of Skywalker. I'm, you know, I'm very mixed. I feel like I want to see, I, I am going to see it more and I'm going to, you know, I may change my opinion over times, but having seen it and thought about it the other night, you know, when it released, I, I quite frankly am a, a bit disappointed um, overall. Not heavily disappointed like I was in The Last Jedi, but disappointed. So that's my opinion. I'm going to give The Rise of Skywalker three stars. Not terrible, uh, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was a decent film and they did some good things, but they also did a lot of bad things. But anyway, I want to hear what you guys have to say. Let me know down below if you agree with my whole theory on, you know, how they kind of switched it up from The Last Jedi to The Force Awakens and then went the complete other way in this film and how that makes this whole trilogy just feel very unnecessary and just juggled around a lot. Um, but yeah, let me know down below what you think. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Check out some of the other content I've been doing. And yeah, if you enjoyed it, like the video, subscribe to my channel for loads more movie content. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.